So we're gonna jump in and start doing some floor repairs on the 71 GT for that teenager. Let's get going. So lucky for him, I actually had a set of these floors sitting here that somebody had given me at some point in time. That's, these are just the, the, the cheaper aftermarket drop-in floors. And I don't like using these. I never use these on any of my customer vehicles. I've just kept them around just for a situation like this or for somebody that wants to do something like this on their own. The reason I don't like using these is they aren't quite as accurately stamped, one, but the whole idea of the flanges hang, hanging up here and around here and back there, I just don't like that idea. I know it makes it easy to drop men welded in, but I don't like the idea of doing it that way. Plus, they don't have any of the floor mounting hardware installed into them pre or pre-installed like the heritage floors do. Or the drain holes and the little seals for the drain holes or any of the studs on the passenger or the right side floor pan for the uh, wiring harness, brake lines and all that stuff. So the way I see it is if you're paying somebody to do it and you want it done halfway right, the labor difference between actually trimming this stuff off, putting marking and drilling and welding in all the hardware for all that stuff is gonna cost you more than the difference between these and the heritage pans. So you might as well just buy the heritage pans and get a better job of it to start with. Plus, these are thinner material than the heritage pans are. So these are more likely to warp on you when you weld them in, making it harder to slide the seat back and forth once you've got them installed. So I figured we didn't need the whole floor, so I went ahead and cut it just inside the one rib so we just have this part here to work with. And that's actually a bit more than we really need. And I actually went ahead and drilled the hole already for the drain up here and welded on the little cup here for the, the protector from the drain from his old floor pan. So I'm still to some extent deciding exactly how I'm gonna tackle some of this, but I figured I'd start out with just cutting some of the rotten stuff out here. So what I did was I just from the bottom side coming up from here, because if you plunge cut from the bottom side with a cutoff wheel, you're leaving all the sparks will be underneath the car rather than flying around the interior. And I do have this weld blanket here. And once we get into it more, I'll do some more to cover up the windshield and dash and stuff before we start throwing more sparks around. But I just plunged it up from the bottom side and cut just inside the sill here. And then just came in, I, I grabbed a the ruler off of one of my squares and just basically went off the edge of the rib and the floor and marked it across the bottom. And then what I can do is I can take, once all this is um, cleaned up, I can drop the floor right in here and then scribe it from the bottom to get me an exact cut line. But once, we, once I got this cut out and just get stuff out of the way, and you come in here with a wire brush, I like using a wire wheel on a grinder here, and just come across and clean up all the spot welds so you can see where they are. And then I'll come in here with a drill and drill these out. There's a couple ways you can do this. They make little spot weld cutters, various types of spot weld cutters. You can come in and center punch that, use a spot weld cutter and cut in trying to cut just through the floor, peel it up and grind all that stuff away. Or you can come in with a drill bit and drill just in a little bit, and get a fatter drill bit than what you really need. And you can drill just, just far enough into the metal so that you can break it loose. Uh, but that does take a bit of feel and a bit of experience to get that right. And if you don't get that right, you could end up drilling through the metal underneath 
and which you can do that if you want. You can just drill right on through all these things and then you can put the floor in and weld it from underneath. But I would rather weld it from the top side because it's a whole lot easier to sit here on the top side and take like a handle of a hammer and hold it down and, and plug weld from the top side than it is to get somebody on the top holding it down or weighting it really heavily and then trying to weld from underneath. So while we don't want to take a lot of time to do this and we're not going to tear into it and do it the way I'd prefer to do it, we're going to, it's going to be more of a uh, down and dirty quick repair, but we're still not going to do, you know, the really cheesy total crap repair because the better we repair this now, the longer it's going to last and we don't know how long it's going to be before he goes back and actually strips this out and does floors and rockers and does the proper restoration on this, which he is planning on doing eventually. But also when that does happen, it'll be a lot easier to take this thing apart and, and work on it then if you do it halfway right now. So I went ahead and used a half inch drill bit, which is way bigger than we actually need, to drill into that so I could kind of cut out the spot weld without drilling too deep. And the um, um, spot welds on these are pretty fat. But I got this old, my favorite tool here for splitting panels is this old Craftsman all metal wood chisel that I picked up at a garage sale for like two bucks one time. Didn't even realize what it was when I bought it. I just knew it was a chisel that looked like it'd be great for doing this with. I broke it the other day, had to weld it back together. So we'll see how long it lasts. I'm gonna have to be on the lookout for another one of these. But you can just get in there underneath here. I've already got the end broke free and just get in here and I personally like this better than most of the uh, panel splitting tools that are on the market just because the way it's shaped and the way it gets in there it just it just works. But as I found out the other day, you got to be a little careful how much upward pressure you put onto it because that's how I ended up breaking it. Even though I've done it a hundred times at least, the other day I pulled up a little bit on it and it just snapped right off. So if you drill this out right, you can get all these spot welds out and get that lifted off there with doing little to no damage whatsoever to the base piece of metal. All I got to do is here come back with a grinder and just clean these up a little bit. And this, will be, this area here will be prepared and ready to accept the new panel. But now I need to work on all that stuff up there. So we've been debating exactly how far we're going to cut and how much we're going to do here. And after much debate and discussion and thoughts, we decided on exactly how it's going to happen. Now this is not exactly how I would like to do it. And I would never do this for a normal paying customer, but in this particular case, because of budget concerns and um, the fact that going into it, knowing that this is just a temporary short to medium term repair with the idea that when funds are available, he wants to rip all this back out and do full rockers, floors, and do it all upright. We decided we're just gonna take that, ed that piece of the floor there and put it in here. And we're going to leave this flange on from here forward. I went in and took it off across here so that back here we can go ahead and put a couple plug welds and do all this stuff back here. And let this cover that hole that was here. And then we'll actually put a cover piece over top of this just to keep water out this is actually going to be stronger than when it came in and keep 
water from getting into the carpets. So I'll probably cringe the whole time I'm doing it, but that's the what it's going to end up being. So what I've done here was I got this piece so that it is the this bump here that holds the seat is centered within the cross member. And I put a couple of Clicos in here so I can put it in and have it sitting where I want it and be able to pull it out, put it back in, have it in the same spot. So once I did that, then I've trimmed all this back edge here so that it fits here like it's supposed to. Now I'll come in here and we'll cut this piece out and I'll put a fresh piece of metal in here before we do all this. So to cut this out in preparation for putting the new piece in, I'm going to use my air powered three inch cutoff wheel because it's a little less powerful, meaning we're not going to throw sparks all over the place so much. You can control that so much better. So we're not slinging sparks into the headliner and into any of the glass because Yes, sparks will stick to glass or burning up any of the interior. So I was originally just going to cut this center piece out and put a, a triangle in there but decided since the front of this was rotted out here to just go ahead and cut the flange and all off. And so I made a cardboard pattern that is going to fit right in here minus the actual lip here. And what I'll do is I'll just add, uh, well, I'll have to measure that roughly a quarter of an inch, 3 to this, and then I'll bend that down and I'll make that out of 18 gauge because that's what original piece was made out of. I actually used to have, or somewhere I still have, patterns for making these because uh, these have never been available through Moss, but they used to be available through Victoria British. But the ones Victoria British had were pretty thin and crappy. So I just made my own patterns and I would make them myself. All right, so I got a piece made. Got a few holes in there to be able to plug weld it to the spring hanger there. And uh, there we go, I just gotta weld that in. Once that's welded in and ground off, then we can start actually fitting this piece. So got all that welded in, ground down. So now what we'll do is we'll put this back in place. I'll get the Clicos in there. We'll lay some weights on here and I'll go from underneath and we'll scribe this line here and where this is, the edge of this and the edge of this. That way it gives me, lets me know where I need to trim this at this side and tells me where I need to drill my holes across here and where, what area here for the, my, and across here for my plug welds. So I got this mostly prepared to put in. I've obviously got a little bit of um, wire brushing and stuff to do to get some, to some paint and stuff so we can't actually weld. And I gotta punch the holes in for the plug welds here yet. But at this stage, what is most important when you're playing with these steel craft panels, whether you're putting a whole floor in or just a section like this. Right now, lay out the seat bolts holes. So we need to come across here and make marks here and here, and then cross and then get the width right, the length between them right, and crisscross them, make sure we're square, and get these holes drilled in here and get some hardware welded into the floor pan now. Because once this is in the car, you cannot get to that front one. So that's the next thing we're gonna be doing. So now we got our seat mounting holes drilled through and instead of just 
welding just some quarter inch nuts right to the floor, the young man that drives this car is a little bit bigger than your average guy. He's something like six foot five, 250 pounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld the nuts to a fender washer and then weld the fender washer to the floor. That way it spreads the load out just a little bit, hopefully at least making the car marginally safer for him. All right, so I got all the nuts welded in for the seat. Got all my holes for my plug welds put in. Got things cleaned up here along that weld line. And uh, another thing that you'll almost never see me do is I went ahead and put a step flange here along the whole edge. And we're gonna let this actually overlap this by about a half an inch. I never like to do that because that can trap water in between those two layers and rot things out in the future if they're, they, you don't get them sealed well or they don't stay sealed. But in this case, it's gonna be fine for the amount of time that this um, repair is intended to last. And uh, we don't wanna do so much grinding on the top. Because if I butt weld it like I like to, then I gotta weld it full length and grind it full length. And I don't wanna do that much grinding in here with the interior still in the car. So we will put it in, we'll stitch weld it in, seam seal it really good, and it'll suffice for the amount of time that he plans on keeping this stuff in here. So once all this is welded in here, I just gotta do some little bit more up in this far corner here and make the cap here. And this side will be done, and then we can just rinse and repeat for the other side.